think about it. Well, he certainly did. I don't know whether it was a think about fencing off Carl Fogarty yes. or passing John Kaczynski. I'll tell you what, it's just what Kaczynski needs. If the two Hondas are concentrating on fighting each other, how's Keeley doing? No, he's dropping off the pace, really. Only just, though. Keeley now dropping back into the uh, arms of Simon Crafar. But date. it's Kaczynski who leads and slightly looking outside the slipstream at the moment. But I would have been amazed if he managed to slide up the inside coming into the stadium. But remember, that's where he did it in uh, race he's one. He's curve. going up the inside of the sax curve. Oh, Ooh. Aaron Slight. Well, he is just something a bit special this year, isn't he? Unbelievable stuff. So Aaron Slight then seems to have part the part of the track that counts the most weighed up perfectly. Those two corners are the critical two corners as far as a last couple of bend, last lap dash is concerned. And I've got to say that Aaron Slight looks a bit special at both of them. Yeah, did you see how John Kaczynski was sliding the rear end into the sax curve? He had the back end in the air and going sideways. But every time I keep thinking that Kaczynski is escaping from the Hondas, they come right back up for him again. Here's the big drag out into the woods. So Kaczynski out into the woods with Aaron Slight right behind him. Steve Parrish. Well, we didn't know whether it could be better, but I think this race is better than the first. As Slight goes through. Are you talking to me now, Keith? Yeah, I, think I, I don't think you ought to, because I don't watch half of it. I'm not the watched. I've been turned away from it. But I'm well, very impressed with Carl at the moment. I have to say, as you say, he's transformed over lunch. And the, the man is pushing. He can win this race. So let's just sit and watch. Maybe he went for some food in Virginio Ferrari's tent. Yeah, that could be what it was. He but wanted more pasta. Absolutely fine. Food. But the same thing that happens always at Hockenheim. Just nobody can get away, Oh, can look they? at this. He was on the dirt then. That shows his commitment, Steve Barris. Thanks very much. I can hardly wait to get me up, my voice back in here. I've got to say, Carl Fogarty. He was committed then, he was on the white line, and whereas I think earlier on this year he might have just knocked it off very slightly and given best to the others, he is not prepared to today. This is it. This is the absolute sheer mental strength we've come to expect from Carl. He just gets fed up with worrying about the machinery, and he rides round any problems he has, and he's through the second as Kaczynski looks up the inside, he can't touch him. That little bump is that Keeley get back in touch, so Pierre Vendor to Keeley number seven, back in touch with the leading group, Crayfar, there he is. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that Kaczynski's allowed himself to slip back into third place. I've got to say that having yes. done all that work, I thought Kaczynski would put a couple of laps on, but he hasn't. He's got to do it all again now. Whether these two have up the pace, we're going to have to wait and see. So, we look back at a slow-mo of Kaczynski possibly having a passing manoeuvre on Carl Fogarty, but of course doesn't. We knew about that. That was a lap ago. Time to get the back breath we back. we go. This is another in the chicane shot. Slight leads, Fogarty in second place, third is Kaczynski, fourth is number seven, Pierre Francesco Keeley. Look at Fogarty, you can see the determination there on his face. But it is still a battle at the front. There's Slight, we're on lap 10 now of the 14. So Slight has got a bit of a, well, we don't know what happened exactly there, but uh, Certainly, Aaron Slight has now got a bit of a lead on Carl Fogarty in second place. Third is still John Kaczynski. Fourth is still Pierre Francesco Keeley. We have another is that blow up. Casoli? No, that's the wrong letters for Casoli. That's Florian, Florian Ferracci, the French Ducati rider. Good enough for me, Jules. Looks like a, an engine terminated. It's Meanwhile, it's oh. Kaczynski that's back in second. Fogarty goes back to third. So, Carl Fogarty's got it. Oh, look oh, at him. Look at the drive. Wick up right behind Kaczynski. And this is round the right hander all the way onto the OS curve. Well, I never raced, Keith, but in, in my uh, opinion, Carl stopped worrying about what the motorbike's doing. He's just nailing it now. Yeah, but you've got to have confidence to do that. And uh, maybe race one was a little better for Carl Fogarty than we thought it was, because he certainly seems to be back on the pipe now. That is for Archie. Well, we don't really want to see what's going on there because we want to see what's going on here. Oh. Here it is. <laughs> Watch for Kaczynski. Here he comes. Kaczynski, and is Foggy following through? Yes, yes. he does. Foggy follows Kaczynski through. Great manoeuvre there from Carl. His racecraft is right with him as well. He's right on it. You know, Carl Foggy could take a win in this second race, and if he in, does, in... that could be the changing point. <laughs> I'm touching wood. I'm not a superstitious man, but I'm gripping wood here. There's a few great banners in the colour. I saw a Carl Fogarty best, best of British beef banner in the uh, crowd. Very uh, particularly apt at the moment, I thought. So no bans on Carl Fogarty winning anything here. Eight. Oh, there's a blown up motorbike. That was the one that uh, we think Ferrari got off of a little earlier. Is he? Yeah, well, it's uh, not really relevant to what's going on, is it? So that was Ferrari. This is the race. Kaczynski is in the lead. Number 11. John Kaczynski leads from Carl Fogarty in second place. Third is Aaron Slight. Fourth is Pierre Francesco Keeley. And you're right, I think Simon Crafar. Oh, Keeley's gone. Keeley's gone. Keeley's gone. Keeley's gone, definitely. 
Keeley's bike has gone pop. So, Keeley's bike's gone. This is like a war of attrition. I have never seen such mechanical mayhem in a superbike race. I wonder if a condition... Oh, Carl leaning on the back of Kaczynski's the caddy there. This is a man with all of his confidence return. The Red Mist well and truly down. Number one, the British double world oh, champion. Oh, no, Carl Fogarty is slight looking at a big hole in the air made by the two bikes in front of him. Fogarty is on a mission. Round the outside, no. <laughs> if he did that, then I think I'd go home. So, <laughs> Carl Fogarty there at the Oscar. <laughs> I think that's as much as my nerves could have stood. Kaczynski out wide and Fogarty on a good tight line with the power down early. Will he get out the slipstream? Kaczynski coming down into the chicane. Well, only Fogarty knows. And there's Keeley, the luckless Pierre Francesco Keeley. A great shame for him. No, no justice at all this weekend for Frankie. Never mind. Next time out, it's Monza. He's won there once. Maybe he can win in a month's time at the Italian round. And Aaron Slight is not going to want to see the number one plate in front of him. And he pulls out of Fogarty's slipstream. Fogarty will dive straight back into Slight's slipstream and pulls immediately back out of it. This will tow them both along towards the rear end of John Kaczynski. It's now, though, Aaron Slight in second. And John Kaczynski has not done the escape act we both feared earlier in this race. We thought when the ex-world champion, the ex-Grand Prix world champion, hit the front, well, that'd be it. He'd break away from the brawling pack. But Superbike is not like that as we go close up on Little John and those two ravening Hondas behind him. Lovely shot. Little bit crossed up after the wheelie. And he's still there. And we're still at the Oscar. curve. Seems like this place comes around just so it's quick. Must terrify you, that corner. It really must. 30, 140 miles an hour, and now it is Kaczynski still leading, but Aaron Slight pulls immediately across to the right-hand side of his track, and Fogarty is pulling across the other side and gets the slipstream and gets past Slight, I'm sure. So Aaron on the brakes though at the chicane and goes Ooh. right back under his teammate. Well, these two want to get their act together, really, because otherwise Kaczynski might just win this. Yeah, but they're right on his tail. That's, that's what John wants, doesn't he? The two Hondas getting in each other's way, but he is not escaping. I'm repeating myself, I know, but he is not getting away from them. Slidey on the brakes up the inside. Does he get it? Yes, he does. And Fogarty oh. can't follow through this time. So Carl Fogarty cannot make it through up the inside of Kaczynski unless he manages it just here around the outside, but I doubt it. Well, I'll we tell have you what. two laps to go virtually. Slight hits the front, short shifts there. You can see him stamping on the gear lever. Slighty has Kaczynski breathing down his neck. He has Fogarty breathing down his neck. And this is a brilliant second race here at Hockenheim. What a great move from Aaron Slight coming into the stadium. He really has got that bit weighed up, Keith, as you say. Riding superbly, the Kiwi, despite the awful haircut. Here he comes, three of them locking up breast. That's Kaczynski 11, Slight is three, one is Fogarty. Aaron looks for the inside here, doesn't make it. John Kaczynski drops the factory Ducati right across his nose into the left-right flick of the second chicane and heads on down for the stadium section. Look at Fogarty, Fogarty now coming up out of the slipstream of John Kaczynski. They're on the quick part of the course. It's debatable whether he's going to have the power to make it past the Ducati, but the Ducati is pulling out this side of Aaron Slight, but no, not into this first chicane. Well, certainly the Hondas are just a little tucked down on power there. There's no doubt about that. Oh, and Slighty gets it weaving away as he asks for the grip from the rear end. Out towards the Oscar, curve, they belt again. And this is incredible. Look at Round Carl. the outside goes Fogarty. Underneath goes Slight. This is into the frightening right-hander at the Oscar. curve. Who's it going to be in the lead? Foggy goes second, but it's still Kaczynski that leads. Oh, oh Fogarty is so close, it's incredible. Oh, this is one of the greatest races we've seen in World Superbike. It is absolutely the level of skill, the level of, well, the level of scaring me out, Keith, is phenomenal. And still Crayfast not making any impact in fourth place. Can't wait till we get to the stadium section. Slight slides underneath Fogarty again. They're balking each other, these two. Well, they're competitive. There's no doubt about that between each other within the team. But it's going to be Kaczynski. One of them's got to beat. Right, the rundown now towards, as we look how close Carl Fogarty was, and he really was close here. This oh. is so very, very fast. One slight mistake and they're all in the dirt. Millimetres in it there. Millimetres between the... As Ducati much as that, Julian. Well, may have nanometers in it, Keith. That better? That's a new one for me. Back. Here we are. Kaczynski from slight. Kaczynski surely running wide at Saks Curve. No, he's not. Oh, Aaron. So, right. Now, Will, well, he wouldn't be able to get past. It's so difficult to get by just now. I'm almost getting my words tangled up here in my teeth, Julian. Has, it's incredible. Has that let Kaczynski escape? That sit up and knocking the throttle off from Aaron? Has final. That, final lap. Carl up, up well. this time. Final lap then. They've got it all to do on this last lap. I reckon it's going to be a battle between the two Hondas for second place now. And really, I'm. Um, because of that, 
because of that moment. I think that's when Aaron had to knock off. Maybe not. Let's fight with him again. What it's am I talking about? It's impossible, though, to know what's going to happen on this last lap. Kaczynski's got to get it all right. But look, right in this slipstream is Aaron Slight. And right there still is Carl Fogarty. Out of the slipstream comes Aaron Slight. He drives past, but Foggy's Ooh. new caddy is very quick on this last 200 yards up. Foggy's the... Honda. Foggy then. Is he going to make it no. past Slight? This is where Aaron is just... The Hondas are struggling very slightly in the middle of this chicane here. They can't... Oh, Ooh, dear me. Aaron. Oh, Foggy rigging its neck. Did you see that? He's nearly ripped the handlebars off then. <laughs> Coming down to the... Oh, dear. Uh, are the Hondas in touch? Or is that okay? He just got a little too much... Watch right. Foggy. Foggy's been good here all the time. Carl, is he going to go down the outside? Well, this is where he's great building up through this turn. Up to the next straight, down to the chicane. And will he be able to hold it together? You can see him snatching handfuls of throttle there. What an incredible race. He's Less than half a lap to go. He's We're into the slipstream now. Slight's gone by. Will Fogarty go as well? Will Fogarty get by Slight? Oh, now we're in for a battle and a half. It's all going to be down to this last turn. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Host, remember what happened in the first race. Aaron Slight, number three, leads. Carl Fogarty is second. Kaczynski's been pushed back to third. The teammates are side by side. Carl goes for the inside. Pushes him out the way. Yes! Fogarty goes. Carl Fogarty goes through. Curve. Fogarty goes through. The Sachs curve is next. Will Slight go back for yes. it? Yes, he does. Carl Fogarty knows he's got it. That is going to be Carl Fogarty's Wonderful. race. Wonderful. What an incredible race for Carl Fogarty. The world champion goes through. Is this the time when he's back with us? Is this the time where Carl Fogarty goes to retain his world championship for a third year running? Aaron Schleitz right on his tail, but it's going to be Carl Fogarty sideways on. Over the line, takes it to the flag. Fogarty wins in Hockenheim. Kaczynski can only look on. Aaron Schleitz is second. The crowd are absolutely amazed at Fogarty. He wins. This is Carl Fogarty's 36th career superbike win. It is, for me, without doubt, his greatest. If he's won it. <laughs> if he's still not won it, it's one of the greatest races I've ever seen anyway. I love people no, on the fence. No complaints at all either way. That's I've got to say race. that whether he's run it or not, I think he hasn't won it. <laughs> yes, that nearly makes sense. <laughs> whether he's, now, what I mean is, whether he's won it or not, I think that he thinks he didn't win it on the line. Gotcha. In my, in my view, the body language from Carl Fogarty was not one of celebration, it was one of, uh, I want to kill somebody. He won Fogarty it! Fogarty won it! Whoa. Carl Fogarty is given the win. Well, he takes the win. Julian is vindicated in what he said. Carl Fogarty, I'm sure, will be celebrating now, and so will the rest of the camp. Oh. Aaron Slight second, Kaczynski third, Crayfar fourth, Edwards fifth. Right, let's take a look at it now. This was the point where I still believe Carl Fogarty thought he'd lost the race here. And we wait to see as it comes across the line. Fogarty dragging Aaron Slight over the line. And for the first time this year, the first place trophy for Foggy. Yeah, and the first big smile that we've seen at a Superbike race as well. Kidding. Well, Michaela, his wife, is in Hockenheim, obviously. She's going to be absolutely ecstatic with that because he can't have been an easy man to live with the last few weeks, there's no doubt about it. John Kaczynski takes the applause for third place. And now we're going to see a bit of champagne drunk, of course, today's work being over and done with. John looking a little happier with life. Yep. <laughs> Carl carrying his spare tyre in all the right places. <laughs> and it's the national anthem, so uh, the champagne goes off during the national anthem. That year for me, with having Carl on the team, was going to be a great opportunity for all those things I'd said about Carl and all those things I'd said about the advantage of the Ducati and now we're on the same bikes and, and Carl started really poorly um, and I think he was finding it hard riding the, the four-cylinder motorbike. Um, but he, I remember at the time he was sitting there in the, in the pit garage, sitting back in the seat like this and looking back across the motorbikes, my two bikes, his two bikes, and you could see along the rear tail sections his bike was about 10 mil lower at the back. So he stuck the rear right hood up in the second race and um, that seemed to give him all the confidence in the world because I don't think it made a miracle cure, but just it stopped the, the Honda from wobbling. It used to wobble a bit, so put more weight on the front, stopped it from wobbling and um, he just stayed in the slipstream for the whole race and ended up winning that race, which is a bit disappointing for me, but um, after that we got back to some tighter circuits and we sort of lost sight of Carl for a little while again until we got to the faster ones again.
So they line up on the grid then. Keeley on pole position. Troy Corza, the man from pole last year, is in second place. And we come right the way through. The grid is exactly the same as uh, it was for race one. Of course, for race two, Edwards there, the man who finished third in race one, lines up on the second row of the grid. Carl Fogarty comes in as well on the second row of the grid. The grid forms up exactly as it did for race one. I'm glad to say that Keeley and Corsa are both out there. No John Reynolds, no Brian Morrison, no Hodgson, no Yoshikawa. But we have the green flag at the back of the grid. We have Red